Today, I'm so excited to share with you tips I learned from both sets of my grandparents. One, my paternal grandparents were in Palo Alto, Northern California. My maternal grandparents were forever in Pasadena, California. Both lived elegantly. They taught me so much just simple, simply about lifestyle and especially hospitality. So let's get started. Tip number one is house plants. This is a Christmas cactus I got at one Christmas probably 10 plus years ago. It's a member of the family and it's just so durable. I have so many of them all over the house and most of them are seven plus years old. This guy's been around forever too. What I do is they like to dry out. And so you just find different vessels and then you, um, it's so easy to just put moss around the outside edge so that you don't see what's happening down below. But in every vessel is like a Ziploc bag at the bottom and then sometimes paper towels, but um, they don't mind being wet. They just kind of like to dry out and then, um, and then they like a full watering. So I take big bowls, so simple, fill them with water. Once they kind of dry out, and then they can be cleaned as well from dust. I'm about to feed them to force the flowering. These are the flower, these are the cactus that get the beautiful bright fuchsia and red and sometimes purple flowers at the end. So they'll be bright and beautiful for Christmas. Sometimes they sit in water for a couple of hours if they need to really absorb. They should get really heavy. This one I watered a few days ago, so it's already nice and wet. Another house plant that I absolutely love that is just so easy to take care of is called Cal and Coe or Calancho, depending on where you're from. Um, I might have butchered that, but um, anyway, I get these at Home Depot um, and the key is having little vessels that can hold them. And the secret to them is they, the, the leaves do not like to be wet at all. They don't like to be watered from the top, but watered from the bottom. And so I just take them and again, we'll soak into the water like this until um, all of the soil becomes heavy and then back they go. But they get big. In fact, let me show you. Let's go outside. That's what all of these are. And they do really well in California weather but um, they just get long and leggy. And again, when I feed them in the water, I use a, a, um, a liquid fertilizer that I put into the water and they get huge. They just keep getting bigger and bigger, but I have so many, look at this guy here. You just pick off the leaves. These, I take them all out, I put them on the lawn, I fill all the vessels up with water, soak them, and then they, uh, they're they good to go for probably two weeks to a month, depending on how, the weather. So those are potted plants, and for um, just bouquets of flowers that you buy, the other thing that I do when it comes to the, in, the vessels that I have in the house are, having containers that fit into the vessels. Here is the florist foam again, forced into this glass container. 
and that way you can control the um, how the the flowers um, actually fit into the container. And then if there's too much space, sometimes I'll just put moss around the outside edge as well. But that's what I've done with all, all of the containers that I have in the house is it makes it easy because you can go to the sink and you can um, arrange the flowers in the sink and, and get messy there and then just plop them in. So as, as Tommy and I continue to play house together, I had a wonderful aha moment recently and I realized that the stationary portion of the sliding glass doors could be wall space. And one thing that I've really missed is having lighting on this side of the house at night because this gets very, very dark here. But lighting is tip number two. And uh, we have amber lighting in all of our lamps and it creates the most beautiful warm glow this time of year, especially as it's starting to get cold. The house is warm and cozy and we have tons of lamps that, um, and the chandeliers all create an ambiance that is just so pleasing. Tip number three is having lots of mobile tables that can be moved around. It, it really is a way to treat loved ones very specially. They pick their spot and then next thing they know, you pull up a little table for them with their drink and it just feels like being wrapped in love. I also really like mobile benches, nothing too heavy. They can um, do, do double duty for feet as well as extra seating and they can be moved all over the house depending on, on where your loved ones choose to sit. So that's tip number three. Tip number four is treating loved ones and guests like royalty when they come into our homes. It didn't matter how often our grandparents had seen us. Whenever we came to the door, they were always so excited to see us. They would greet us with a hug and always usher us into the home, offering a warm or a cool drink, a place to sit down. Um, they took the time to to hear about our lives. And there is just no greater um, form of hospitality than that. It's free, it doesn't cost a thing. It's just our time and our energy. Tommy and I, we were just at Les Miserables. I'd seen it about, I don't know, in the 19, probably 1990. And it had such an impact on me. And we just uh, were there this uh, weekend and it's just such a reminder that how we use our time um, in the end really is what matters most. And um, there's just no better use of time than how we love on the people in our lives. So that would be tip number four. Tip number five is so much fun because um, in the fall and winter, making big casserole type meals is just the way to go. They can be made um, you know, obviously for a crowd or portioned out and then put into the freezer for individual sized meals or for two or for four. And it just makes um, hosting really, really easy. My go-to fall recipes are chicken pot pie. I make the filling and freeze it. And then, and then once it's thawed, I can cook it off, bake it off with a puff pastry on the top. Um, shepherd's pie, lasagna, chicken stew with biscuits, beef tamale pie, and slow roasted pork. That's my short list of favorite fall and winter foods, especially fall. Um, but uh, that way you can always handle a pop-in guest. Um, and there's just always food in the house for yourselves as well. And this time of year, I think we're all craving a nice hot meal and serve it with lots of vegetables, a side salad, and it just makes life very, very easy.
The other thing to have in the house all the time are an assortment of cheeses, an assortment of crackers and salamis, um, prosciutto, things that have long shelf life as, as well as beer and white wine in the refrigerator, always a sparkling water, some kind of a fruit juice like a pomegranate juice and uh, red wine and um, teas and coffees. And that's it, stocked with those few things. Always entertain, spur of the moment, and be able to offer something nice for guests. Tip number six is um, kind of um, piggybacking on how my grandparents would always serve a beautiful meal at the table. Um, but I wanted to share a personal story with you. When my daughters went away to college, I was living alone and it didn't take long before I realized that I was just very uncomfortable sitting at the dining table by myself. It just emphasized the fact that I was um, alone. And so I moved my dining space into the living room. I had a round skirted table next to a chair or sofa. And I all I needed was a beautiful, flower, like in a little vase, and a candle, and maybe um, a, a tablecloth or another little um, cloth over the table. And it just created such a wonderful like boutique type um, meal setting for me. There was a lamp on the table too, so I could sit and read. And what I learned was that we can accommodate our dining space according to what what actually feels right and feels nurturing because after all, a table and a place to dine is foremost nurturing. It's nurturing our body and it's nurturing our, our spirit. So whether, I, I guess if we're thinking lifestyle and hospitality, when we start being hospitable with ourselves, then we can be, we can expand that to maybe one more or an entire table or a big party or a house full of people. But um, it all comes down to how we take care of ourselves and those that we love. So those are my six tips that I learned from my beautiful grandparents that I wanted to share with you today. As always, I'm just so grateful for you. I'm just enjoying so much doing those, these videos and our back and forth and um, getting to know you as well. So, and if you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button below. I would love to have you join our family and um, we hope to see you again soon.